past few weeks, you have learned several statistical tests for you to compare two samples and also to perform the correlation test for two variables. So all the tests that we learned so far are parametric tests. So starting this week, you're going to learn a non-parametric test. After this lecture, you will be able to understand the difference between parametric and non-parametric tests. At the same time, you also need to know how to perform non-parametric tests for comparison of two samples. So that means that you're going to run a statistical test other than the t-test to compare the two samples. You also need to know how to perform non-parametric tests for relationship of two variables. So this is the topic of this lecture. So first we will discuss briefly in general what are the difference between parametric tests and non-parametric tests. After that we are going to learn a non-parametric test to test the difference between two independent samples, followed by another two sample test, but this time is for two pair sample. Last, we are going to learn how to calculate the correlation coefficient based on the non-parametric calculations. So the correlation that we're going to use is different from the Pearson correlations. So what is the difference between parametric and non-parametric tests? So first, we need to know what is a parametric test. So for example, what you have learned so far, you have learned the z-test and t-test. Both of these tests are parametric tests. So if you look at their formula, how you get the test score is by using a parameter of the populations or using the sample statistic to estimate the population parameter. So for example, you can see the mean of the population, which are the parameter, and also the statistic for the sample. So as all these tests use the parameter or statistic of sample to estimate the parameter in the formula. So the test, the Z test and T test is a parametric test. So the test that solely based on the probability distribution they are parameterized. It is depend on probability distribution, so there is a curve that we refer to, and also this probability distribution is characterized by the parameter. So for example, the standard normal curve, the z-score, which is characterized by using the parameter of mean and standard deviation. So this is a parametric test. Then how about non-parametric test? Tests that based on the distribution free or specific distribution, they do not parameterize. There are a few more differences between the parametric test and non-parametric test. Because of the probability distribution that we use, we have the assumption about the parameter of the population distribution from which sample were drawn. For non-parametric tests, we made no such assumptions. In terms of the hypothesis, so the no hypothesis is made on the parameter of the population distribution. So for example, usually you have a pair of hypotheses, which is a no hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And in this hypothesis, you can see the parameter. However, from non-parametric test, no hypothesis is free from a population parameters. So usually, instead of showing the parameter in the hypothesis, it will show a statement. So basically, the meaning is the same. It's just that in the non-parametric test, a hypothesis usually is in the form of statement, sentence, and words. There's no parameter will be included in the hypothesis. Another difference is for parametric test, specific assumptions are made regarding to the populations. So for example, you have to measure your data set from the population that is normally distributed. And if you compare 
between two samples or more than two samples, you have to make sure the sample variance need to be equal. On the other hand, for non parametric test, there is no specific assumption are made. So that means that we will use the non parametric test when our data is not normally distributed and the variance between samples are not equal. From beginning of the research, usually we will define our research questions, then we will design our experiment to collect data. After that, we are going to organize the data, summarize the data, and next thing is to perform the statistical test. All the steps before performing statistical hypothesis is the same, and we will only make a decision whether we are going to use the parametric or non-parametric test after we have collected the data, before we choose and perform a test. We need to test the data, whether the data is normally distributed, and the variance is equal. So before we run for the test for normality, we can already have some idea whether our data is normally distributed based on the summary of our data. So usually we use the box plot to summarize our data. So from here, you already can see, in this case, for the green apple, the data it seems like it's not normally distributed because the medium is skewed to one side. So we need to perform a statistical test to test whether the data has a normal dis distribution. So the null hypothesis for this test, test for normality, is that the data is come from a normally distributed population. So the alternative is the opposite. The data is not from the normally distributed population. So in this case, we have the data set. We want to compare the weight for two types of apple. One is a red apple, another one is green apple. So after we collect the data, we will organize the data and then summarize in the box plot. Then after that, what we need to do, we need to perform a test for normality. One of the tests we can use is Shabiro test. So there are other tests that are available to test for normality, but for this course, we will use the Shabiro test. So to test the normality, we're not going to do it manually. We're going to use the R. So the R is a calculator. So the command is very straightforward. We just type Shabiro dot test put the bracket, and then put the variable. So in this case, you have two samples, one for the red apple, another one for the green apples. So we have to test the value, the data set for each of these different apple separately. So first we run the normality test for red apple, then the the statistical score will be calculated and the p-value will be given. So if the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis. That means that our data is not normally distributed. So in this case, the p-value is much smaller than 0 0.05. So it's 4.136 with 6 decimal points. So in this case, we're going to reject the null hypothesis and go for the alternative hypothesis. So our data is not normally distributed for the red apple. So we're going to perform the same test for normality for the green apple. So in this case, both data sets are not normally distributed. So even only one of the data set is not normally distributed, that means that you cannot use the parametric test. This data set already violate the most important assumption for the t-test. So the next assumption for the t-test is the homogeneity of variance, whether the variance of two samples are the same. Test for the homogeneity of variance, we're going to use the Levin test. So the null hypothesis of this test is the variance between samples are equal. 
So the alternative is the variance between sample are not equal. So this is the test. So we're going to run the test in R, and this is a command, Riven test. In this case, we're going to test the measurement of the apple weight against the color of the apple. Okay. Then the test statistic will be provided. It will give you the F value, which is the F score, the statistical score. At the same time, the P value will be given. So in this case, the P value is 0 0.04 six which is smaller than 0 0.05 so we're going to reject the no hypothesis and our conclusion is the variance between sample are not equal so if the test suggested the data violate any of the assumptions so in this case both assumption for normality and homogeneity of variance are violated we need to perform non-parametric statistical tests. 